Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again. Um, we've got another Double Masters 2022 legendary creature that we're going to talk about today. Um, I've realised recently, but just before I start that, I've realised recently that some of the decks I've been posting recently have got a little bit pricing, got a little bit of hat of hand for some people. Um, this deck at the moment is coming in on goldfish at about $460. However, there are about five cards in it that you can take out and replace with other options. Um, I've left them in now because obviously I'm playing this online. Online, this is kicking in at the moment at 44 tickets, so it's not too bad, but $464 is a little bit expensive. So I'm gonna talk about the ones I'll take out as we go through it. Um, I'll point them out so people know, but hopefully this will be something a little bit different to what I usually do on YouTube. However, this deck is something I've wanted to build for a little while. Um, I want to do something a little bit more tribal and a little bit more fun. So, without further ado, let me introduce to you Gave Guru of Spores, two white, black, green, um, literary creature, Fungus Shaman. Um, comes into play with five plus one plus one counters on it. We can remove a plus one plus one to create a sapling, and we can pay one sack of creatures to put a plus one plus one on target creature. So, what am I trying to do with this? Basically, I'm trying to abuse this bit, the saprolings and the plus one plus one counters. To make it work, obviously, um, we've got a whole load of cards in here. Like I said, I will talk about the ones you can take out. I've put them in because I own them on here. They don't need to be in the deck. They can be replaced by other things. I will talk about some of the options at the end of the video. Um, but in the meantime, let's go through this one because this is the one I'll be playing on stream later this week. So. We've got a lot of lands, as you can see. Yes, I've got Fable Passage and Field of the Dead as normal. Um, we've, you're probably wondering, looking at this, why there's only three forests. Well, most of the dual lands we've got are green and X lands, yeah? So I've gone a little bit heavier with the, well, four plains and four swamps, but everything else tends to have a bit of green involved in it somewhere. Um, just so we can keep it going and make it a little bit more balanced than what we would do normally. There is a couple of key lands I want to point out in here. Um, we've got Vitu Ghazi, um, so we can create saplings from this. And we've also got, further up the tree, a Gavany Township. So we can pump our creatures up, um, which helps with goo, because then we can remove the plus one, plus one counters to create a sapling if we need to. So, you know, it's got its ups and downside to it. To try keep the cost down a little bit, I've changed around my usual mana base. Um, Soul Ring is available so readily now in all types of formats. It comes in all the Commander decks if you buy them in real life. That's in here, along with Arcane Signet. That tends to be in all of them. To add to that, I've just included Commander Sphere. Again, it's another card that's easily gotten hold of and isn't hideously expensive at the moment. So that's kind of the ramp. That's only the real ramp we have in the deck. So we can stay alive and have fun with it. What we're trying to do, and we'll use Thalid as the example, is to get the spore counters on the Thalid, on the funguses. So we can remove the three spore counters and create some saplings. How are we gonna do this? Well, we've got to stay alive in the first place. So we've got Souls Warden, Souls Attendant, and Prosperous Innkeeper. Um, just to gain some life as creatures come to play. Obviously, Souls Warden, Souls Attendant lets us gain life from any of our opponent's creatures coming in, and Prosperous Innkeeper is just ours, but, you know, swings and roundabouts. Um, we've got the original Thalid, as I said, which is readily available from most friendly local gaming stores, and Utopia Micons in here as well. Um, and this has an extra ability that we can sac sacrifice a sapling to add some mana, so it gives us a little bit of mana ramp, which is quite nice. I've included the Elixir of Immortality to get back, um, well, basically shuffle our stuff from our graveyard back into our library when it gets that far, and it will get there. Um, people will give you a while to build up the board, and then they realise what you're doing, and all of a sudden you'll get hit quite heavily. So you'll be getting rid of creatures and things will be going to the graveyard. But one of the things we have included that I hadn't talked about was Hardened Scales. Um, if one or more plus one plus counters would be put on a creature you control, put that many plus one plus one planets. So, you know, it works with Goo, um, Gave over here. It works with some of the other creatures that get plus one plus ones. Because we're going for lots of token saplings, intangible virtues might as well be in for a plus one plus one of vigilance. Um, and then we've got some of the, you know, we've got a real variety. So Death Spore Thalids in here. Um, Sacrifice a sapling, we get a bit of removal from this. Sack some saplings, give something minus one, minus one, which is quite nice. 
Elvish farmer lets a sap sac um, sapling, uh, sacrifice the saplings. That's a bit of a tongue twister to gain a couple of life. Um, sapling migration is basically just a spell. We can cast it, kick it if we need to. We get full tokens. It's all good. Sprout Swarm is one of the key things. Eventually, you'll be able to just keep convoking this and replaying things and getting extra saplings, playing, doing the buyback cost. Um, it is one green and one. With the buyback, it's one green and four. But you should be able to do that and get the saplings back all the time. So it should be quite interesting. Um, Shell Dwellers here. It's a zero five. It's a big thing. It's an early blocker. It creates a sapling eventually. Same with um, Vitus Spore Thalalid. It's only a 1-1, one, one, but you can sack this one to give a creature haste, which is quite nice. <sighs> Spore Flower comes in, just sits there, does nothing, makes some saplings, and eventually you can remove th well, you can remove three Spore counters from it to prevent all damage. This is the only one of the few creatures in the deck that doesn't actually produce saplings, but I figured having a sort of like reusable fog every couple of turns probably isn't the worst thing in the world. Sylvian Anthem's in here. Um, a lot of the creatures you can see is green and all the saplings are green, so giving them a little bit of a pump and then getting to scry when they come to play seems like a good idea to me. And then we've got the first legendary creature, which is an elf druid. Um, gives all our funguses plus one, plus one for each spore counter on it, so we get some big fungi really quickly. And then we can exile one from the graveyard to put a spore counter on each fungus we control, so we can ramp them up that way. Um, Celestia Guild Mage is purely here because we can pay four eventually and create a sapling, or we can pay four and give all our creatures plus one plus one. Contagion Clasp and Contagion Engine are here for the very simple reason they proliferate. We can proliferate the spore counters um, and basically ramp up how quickly we're going to make our saplings off our funguses. But they're both in here. Also, Contagion Engine comes down later in the game with a bit of luck, puts a minus one, minus one on every creature. Um, and then you can proliferate away. Um, notice there's choose any number of permanents and all players. It doesn't say anything about targeting. It does get around targeting restrictions. So if something's got hexproof or shroud, so on and so forth, you can still put minus one, minus one on it, still proliferate it. It does work. And I've had that checked by a judge. <laughs> Radiant Destinies here. Um, we're going to choose sapling, obviously. Although it may be a case you want to choose fungus, but sapling's probably the right way to go. This is like a slightly more expensive version of intangible virtue but it will get there death blooms here when it dies it gives us a sapling um, it's also a fungus but that's beside the point it's just it got us a sapling marauding blight priest is in here um, we're going to gain some life from here from here from here from some of the other things and it seems like a reasonable plan to put in here maybe drain our opponents out as we gain the life evolution sage is doing the proliferate thing so once we've got a few funguses in play they've got some spore counters on them start playing our land we can proliferate them up quicker fight rigging works with the plus one plus one um we're going to put these all over the place make our creatures a bit bigger and it's worth going right the first card that i'll be talking about is food chain um, this is one of the ones i've got picked up in modern masters 22 um, at the moment it is just looking across to my other screen food chain is literally a ticket on mtgo at the moment but in real life it's about 42 dollars this is one of the cards you can take out and replace with something else um, you could put a i don't know kodoma's reach in a far seek something like that avenger zendikar even maybe um, just to keep it going but food chains in my deck Likewise, Growing Rights of Inmatech is also shooting up in price. Um, it's $20 at the moment. Um, and it's about one point something tickets. 0.02 of a ticket at the moment. It's nice. Eventually, we'll get to flip it and turn it into a mini gaze cradle, which is lovely. But in the meantime, it does filter through and get another couple of creatures in our hand. Um, going back to the cheaper cards, Psychotropic Thalalids in here. It's pay one, sack it, sap, draw a card, which is quite nice. Germinates in here. Um, you can do one alpha strike with one thing, make sacrifice, sacrifice some of the saplings that are going to die, make something bigger, which is quite cool. Um, Yavimar Shepherd's in here because it creates a sapling when it comes into play. There's no other reason to have it in here. Thalalid Devar is in here um, because it gets big very quickly. If you've got four or five saplings, you're going to make this very hard for your opponent to block. Likewise, um, 
This is coming because of the spore counters. Thorn Thalid. It's not many things have protection from green. And sacrificing, removing three spore counters and pinging something might have its advantages for you. Um, Golgari gem gem uh, germinations here because when some of our other creatures die, um, we get a sapling off it. Second legendary creature is Slimefoot the Stowaway. Um, yeah, I suspect you're all expecting to see this at some stage. But when a sapling dies, you deal one damage to each opponent and you gain a life. Seemed like a good plan and no brainer in this deck. Absan Ascendancies here um, to pump up our saplings as we go along. It's a nice little pump effect, but it also means that when we kill some of our creatures, um, we get some white spirit tokens, which is quite nice because with things like um, oh, anything that gives put plus one, plus ones on, you know, Gay, for instance, we can sacrifice a creature and put some plus one, plus ones on the flyers, get a bit of flying blocking going. Um, Paladin Mycodomes in here as well. Um, sacrifice sapling each creature you control it's a fungus or sapling gets plus one plus one until the end of turn so you can make some beaters damnation's one of the cards i was talking about there are cheaper effects um that destroy all creatures damnation is currently sitting if i remember correctly around about i'm just checking because i want to make sure i'm telling you right it's 20 dollars as well but you know it's up to you you can play this there's all sorts of things that can go in its place but you want one of the four mana ones so maybe wrath of god um so on and so forth could go in its stays right parallel lives is probably one of the most expensive cards in the deck um on mtgo it's not too bad um it's currently sitting at 0 0.02 of a ticket but in real life it's sitting at 60 dollars you don't need it if you're building this in real life um, feel free to take it out replace it with something else i'm not quite sure what at the moment but like i say i'll talk about them at the end and see what i can think of um where are we that was parallels path of discovery is fine that's a nice one creatures come into play you get to explore it helps you ramp your mana out a little bit quicker likewise sapling symbosis is just fun um, you can pay six mana have it come in as flash and have a whole load of saplings appear which could help you do the alpha strike with the um mycodem if you wanted to um spore swarm again it's just an instant three saplings that come into play um sporogenesis is an enchantment uh, at the beginning of your upkeep you may put a fungus counter on target non-token creature whenever a creature with a fungus counter on it dies um create a sapling token so you can put tokens on this um and get some other things going as well yeah so if your shade dries it can turn into one it's worth trying out and i thought it'd be a bit of a laugh um Felden Hermit's in here. You can either morph it and flip it up and get your four saplings, or you can just play it face up for the plus one plus one for all the saplings. I would suggest morphing it first and then flipping it up just so we get the saplings. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive. It turns into a eight um eight mana creature at that stage, but it's probably worth it. Um Spulso with Thalids in here, purely because it's big, it's a four four for four mana that makes saplings when you get some fungus counters going. Dramatic Finale helps us pump up our creature tokens as things come in. And whenever one of the other creatures dies, we get a nice little 2-1 inkling. Um, this only triggers once a turn, but you know, it's better than nothing. Likewise, Leonor Autumn Sovereign's in here. Um, to chuck around some plus one, plus one counters, draw a card if we've got things with different power. Um, it also gives us the plus one, plus ones to play around with Gave a bit more if we need to do some of them to remove them and create some saplings. We have some extra blockers. Cathar's Crusade is another one of the more expensive cards um, that I've been looking at um, on MTGO. It's not too bad in real life. It's only about $7, but in real on MTGO, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's great. Chucking around all these plus one, plus one counters when you make saplings is fantastic. Doubling Season is the automatic removal if you're building it in real life. It's a stupidly expensive card. It's $85, $86 at the moment, according to Goldfish. Um, if you've got it, play it. If you haven't, remove it. I'll talk about the choices in the end of the moment. Tender Shoot Dry is quite nice. Um, we get to the city's blessing quite easy with the amount of saplings we're making, and then make, giving them more plus two, plus two is really nice. Likewise, um, my Coloth's in here. Um, we can devour some creatures um, and put a load of plus one, plus one counters on it. And then once we've devoured some of our saplings to feed it, it just replaces them with more and more saplings. You can't complain about that. 
Likewise, Savage Thalids here, um, we can regenerate Thunguses if things get blown up, so that's cool. Spore Mind, whenever a land comes into play, create a sapling, so it's a little bit of a landfall trigger. It's a little bit expensive, but hey, it's a fungus. Let's try it out, see if it works. Um, the Ancients here as well, this is a little bit better because this only, you only have to, if you've got this in play, notice here, instead of removing three, you only have to remove two counters, which makes it a lot easier to get your saplings going. Um, I've chucked Gear Hulk in just to chuck some plus one plus one counters around. Yes, it's an artifact creature, it's not fungus, it's a construct, I'm aware of that. Um, but at the end of the day, chucking around some extra plus one plus ones to get an advantage with Gave is a good idea. Likewise, Juniper Order Ranger is a really cheap card. Um, it's very good and it doesn't cost us a lot to do anything with it. It is uh, currently sitting at 25 cents. And it's very good in this sort of deck because it says another creature, not a non-token creature, but any creature comes into play under your control, it gets a plus one, plus one counter, and you get to put a plus one, plus one on this as well. It works. Feral Thalids here as well. Um, we can remove the spore counters from it to regenerate it. Yes, that's all it does do. It doesn't create saplings, but it's a big beta and it gives people a little bit of a thought when they're attacking. The last four cards at the end here are the things that I'm really counting on to be my win conditions in some form or other. Um, Verdant Force is here because you want to make saplings. Why would you not have this in here? Um, and it creates one in everyone's upkeep. So you at least you play it on your turn. If you've still got three opponents on the table or on the MTGO, you're going to get three extra saplings before you get back to your turn. So that's really quite nice. To help us win, we've got Crater Hoof Behemoth. And we've got end raises and end race forerunners. You've got to play them. Given all your creatures trample and loads of plus X's or plus X plus X in Crater Who's thing, plus two, plus two in Vigilance and Trample. In the case of end runners, you can't complain about. The final thing I've included, just because I can, is Genesis Wave. Um, it's one of the few sorceries in the deck. Um, and that is currently sitting a little bit under um, $7 at the moment. So I'm just playing it because we'll get some mana in. We won't have much to do. You know, most of the cost is down here in the one, two, and three section, a little bit in the four. So we might as well use this to try and ramp out and get some extra lands, saplings, anything into play. Notice that every there's only a few cards in this whole deck that will not come into play off Genesis Wave. So it's worth having. So going back to what I was talking about. So We'll start with Parallel Lives. Um, the first thing I'll probably look at changing this for, and to be fair, um, doubling season as well, would be Hidden Stockpile. Um, if you've got some other way of sacrificing something, you can sacrifice a creature, scry one. When, as long as you do it in your turn, you get the Revolt Trigger, you get a Servo Token. Yes, it's not as good as what you have got, um, but it is a possibility you can put it in here. Likewise, the earliest, the easiest thing you can replace some of the more expensive cards with, um, Parallel Lives, Doubling Season, um, what else did I say? Uh, food Chain, wherever Food Chain's gone, there it is. You could look at it and go, yeah, I'm a bit worried about the amount of removal I've got on the deck, and you can use that to do some other things with. So um, you could do Join the Maestros and get some 4-3 Black Ogres, which is fine, you know, sack a couple of saplings, that's okay. Um, You've got Merciless Resolve, go and draw some cards. Um, Spark Harvest gives you a way to destroy creatures and planeswalkers. There are different options you've got, you know, Foul Tongue if you want to. Um, I don't think that'd work though. Yeah, you know, or Binding of the Old Gods isn't the worst thing in the world. Given all your Sapphire's Death Touch return is pretty good. Likewise, things like Eldritch Evolution, um, you can sacrifice Sapphire and go and get one of your one casting cost things if you need to. Wouldn't recommend it, but you know, it's a possibility. Um, and it's just trying to find something that works for you. Obviously, I'm going to play the deck how it is at the moment. I like the deck how it is, but just bear about the fact that you can do other things. I mean, the other option is if you want to go down the complete road, you can just go and look for small creatures and put in. Um, Rampant Rejuvenate springs to mind. Um, Avenger of Zendikar is fairly cheap at the moment because of all the extra reprints of it. Um, Sun Titan maybe. Um, Sheldred if you're lucky enough to have one. Uh, yeah, It's just random stuff. Just pick out what you want to do with it. Um, 
you know, if you could put some more ramping, you could put Sylvan Carotid in if you want to. Cheville, Bane and Mer Monsters is reasonably cheap at the moment. You can get it in the deck quite happily. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else I've got kicking around here at the moment. Um, some of the gods, maybe. Anything that you want. Um, one thing I would probably look to do if I was taking them out would be to try and get Kamal from the original legendary Commander Legend set to give all your creatures plus three, plus three, and trample. Um, I tend to play this more in elemental decks because its ability to turn lands into elementals, but it's an option. Um, likewise, the final option I would probably look to play would be something like Nethrov Apex of Death. If we can just mutate it onto something, it's pretty good. Um, or just go and find some plus one, plus one um, enchantments. There's still quite a few of them around. Um, so you could go with things like Always Watching. You could go with Glorious Anthem. You could go with uh, not, maybe Leyline of Abundance, maybe. Yeah. Um, pay for some mana, pump all your creatures up. Um, Gaia's Anthem is the one I was thinking of. But there's options. Just don't be put off. And Path of Braithry is always a good one as well. Um, to be fair, that might be one I change. But I'm going to play it how I've got it at the moment. Path of Braithry is probably best for over Radiant Destiny anyway. But that's what I would be looking to doing. Anyway, I really hope you found that a bit more useful. Um, yes, it was very rambled at the end. So I was trying to think as I was recording the video. I didn't really plan it out. But there's options. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Like I say, thanks for watching this. Um, Hit the subscribe button, It'd be really nice to get notified when I get some more up. Come and follow me on Twitch, the details are below in the description. Um, we're building up, we're getting near to my goal of 100 followers. Um, so we're at 91 at the moment. I had a nice person join me the other night when I was asleep. So if you're here, Zell Chivox, thank you for coming and following me on Twitch. I really do appreciate it and hopefully we'll catch you on the stream at some stage. Um, but in the meantime, that's me finished for now. Take care and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.